everyone welcome to my channel this is Amy today I'm going to show you how I do a filbert brush style floral arrangement on this clear gloss bottle I am going to be using two a magic filbert brushes and I do put affiliate links down below my videos number 10 and number 16 and then I'm going to be using two a magic flat brushes and this is going to be, they're getting to the point where it's hard to see, a number 10 and a number eight, and then a number two Deerfoot Stuffler. All the paints I use are folk art paints. I use a mixture of multi-surface and enamels. This is magenta, pure orange, burnt sienna, titanium white, Thicket and lime green. Now, when I'm doing this, I don't have a whole lot of space, and I know I've had people say they they wish that I could show them all the brush strokes or the loading of my brushes. Sorry, I'm folding up some paper here. Uh, but the problem I'm having is that the way I'm doing these right now, I don't have a whole lot of room to show you and have my palette right here in front of me. So I'll do the best I can. Yeah, you know, basically when I load a brush, I just keep adding paint to it as I go. So it's really not anything different than what I was doing initially. All right, so I'm just dipping paint, or dipping my brush into the paint, just getting it loaded. I'll tip it into the orange, and then you can do a blending stroke, but I'm not going to on this. I'm going to push this down, bring my brush up, and then when I'm pulling it back, it'll come up. Now you can see that part of the tip did not paint, but you know, you're gonna have to learn to deal with, sometimes that's gonna happen. You can just touch it, fill it back in. You can also, when you're doing this, you can add white into it, do the same thing. I'm pushing my brush down, bending the, the uh, uh, what am I trying to say, the, the stem of the brush up in the air and I might, you can give it a little push forward if you want and then pull up. Okay, now these, this part that I'm doing right now are just gonna be little, I wanna say like buds or, you know, just partial. But just do it, pull it up and go like that. I am gonna go back over these cause I want to make sure that they're actually covered really well uh, right now. You know, there is a void in the center. So when you do this, if you feel like you're not getting the coverage that you want, then make sure you go back over them again. And these are just supposed to be just very fun, loose, 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 loose flowers. Okay, and again, doing it with a filbert brush, bring it up like that. If you feel like you want more of a round, you can go in there with the round, pull it back up. Again, just very, very simple. Now, when you're watching my vid sorry, watching my videos, if you have any questions, comments, just please put those down below. Anything you'd like me to show you to paint? You know, I, I do specialize in just painting flowers. I know sometimes people you know, want to see me paint something else. You know, I'm really into flowers, so that's kind of hard for me. I'm not really into painting, like doing uh, faux kind of, like bears and that kind of stuff. I'm not really into that. You know, so if you're wanting something like that, you're probably at the wrong channel. I just like to try to show different things you can do with paint brushes, different strokes. You know, some are great, some are maybe not so, not so much, but it just gives you another avenue if you're a new painter, something else to try. And then I'm just gonna go down here, do the same thing. Hopefully you can see all these. Again, I'm just bringing the brush up just putting different colors in it, you know, the three. Just randomly sticking my brush in there. 
And then I can go like this even, do it up. If you feel like it needs to be, you need to add more to it, feel free to do it. It's just really very uh, loose and it's meant to be that way. I'm not trying to do a real you know, detailed flower here by any means. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is take a minute, hit this with a hair dryer or heat gun actually, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is come in with my smaller brush. Again, this is the number 10, and I'm gonna load it basically the same way. You know, go ahead and I might just be tipping in this one into the different colors, but let me go ahead and uh, actually just do all pink like I did before, go into the whites, and then I'm gonna come back in here and just push it down do basically the same thing, but give it a little bit more color, a little bit more uh, filling it in. Because the thing of it is with, with painting on glass, the one thing that you need to make sure is that your coverage is actually spot on, you know, that you have. You can actually even go like this if you want, just to make it push it down some or do a bigger brush even. But the main thing is to make sure that your coverage that you're getting is actually very opaque. And the reason for that is that you want to make sure that you have a good, a good coverage. The better your coverage on your product, the better your durability is going to be. Now like on these, you know, I might want to throw some light in here can even just do it. These are just more, uh, more like, let's say eclectic, that's not what I'm looking for. Just very loose, very unique. Now I'll come over here, do it. And this way, getting the very, you know, another level of paint on your flower, that actually will help with the durability. Now just make, I didn't say this in the beginning, but I like to try to remind people that when you're working with glass, it's very important that you wash your bottle with soap and water or your glass item, whatever it is you're painting. You wash it with soap and water, and then you go over it with rubbing alcohol just to make sure that whatever uh, whatever you're creating is clean, doesn't have the lint on it, and you're ready to go. Now, with this design, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go into, and I hope I can see, one of the problems is I don't have my, my video camera uh, kind of you know, isn't working, so I had to go back to just using my regular camera. So I can't really see a lot of what I'm doing. I need to get get out and get a new camera, but I haven't been able to yet. So, so anyhow, with these, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to come down, just add in my my little stems. And on this, I, I like to just dip my brush into a lot of different colors when I'm adding my stems, my flowers to my stems. And then like on this, I'm just doing a little, little piece here just to kind of attach it to the flower and go on. And here we go. Here we go. All right, so those are kind of cute like that, right? A little different. All right, so with these being so close, I'm just going to kind of bring a stem out this direction. You don't even have to add stems if you don't want. You can just do, do your design just as though the 
you're just doing flowers and they're just flowers with the some leaves around them or whatnot they don't all have to be connected to a stem you don't have to do it that way all right so let's uh, go here I am going to just slowly do my little wave my little Kirby's and I'm sorry this paper is making so much noise but then I'm gonna on some of them I'm just gonna do them like they're folded like that on these I will just do a little stem to them I'm not gonna put it up into it because technically it would probably fall into the fold inside where I can't see it I'm just gonna come back over these again a little bit like that you can do one you can do two you can do them even maybe create just like that add some of your regular sorry this is making so much noise some of your regular leaves to it or you can do all of them like this okay on this one I'm going to do the green the darker green on the outside of both sides and then pull a stem here just like that Again, I apologize if any of this is off screen. And then maybe do some more here. On this one, I'm going to do the kind that actually has two different colors on the, uh, on the outsides. One is dark, one is light, as you can tell. And the only problem with this one, since I put the, the flowers so close together, is that I can't really put a whole lot of floral, or not floral, but leaves in between the florals. On this one, I'm going to do this again. And I like the colors to be just kind of varied. I don't want them to all be, or do I have to think that they all have to be the same? Because they don't. Okay. If you get too much paint on your brush, just make sure you wipe it off on your paper towel. If you, uh, you know, if that doesn't work, you know, you can wipe, wash them off, but I prefer that you actually just wipe them off as opposed to doing that because the water can compromise the durability of your paint. So you just want to make sure that you're not doing anything that would cause that. Okay, there you go. So rotating the colors, rotating the shades, you know, how you're painting them, which way you're heading with your, with your leaves, that can make a difference. And this one's going to be all dark on the edges, like that. Just have some fun. You know, you can be a little looser with them if you want, you don't have to be straight on uh, you know, everything has to be particular you know you, that you've got to do them a certain way or whatnot that can be varied all right let's see and you can actually do maybe even do some that are lighter and then go over the top with darker ones that's nice too a lot of times You can do some that are just partial leaves. And I like this when I do different shades, you know, different colors from one side to the next. I do like that look. All right. Now what I'm going to do, because I feel like I've got a lot of the bigger leaves in, and so I'm gonna take my smaller brush, the number eight, I'm gonna do the greens too, but I think I'm going to go into more of into the browns, try to make more of an olivey color. Actually, I think I want the brown and the green on the same side, so I have to kind of switch that up a little bit. Maybe even go back into the yellow. You can just do this as you go. You know, if you don't like the color, if it's too dark, which that one's getting to be dark, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit come back in here but I want to do my blending strokes do a little bit more green on them 
and then I'm going to come in like this and just start start adding them. And I am going to go over the top of a lot of my leaves that I've already painted or my items that I've painted. I think that gives it more of a natural look by doing this. And because if you're doing a floral arrangement, all your flowers aren't going to be separated out. And that's one thing I like to, to point out that they're not going to be, they're going to be all over the place. You know, mixed in. I ended up getting some red. So if you don't want your colors to intermix, my suggestion would be to hit it again with a heat gun or hair dryer just so that they don't. If it doesn't matter to you, then I wouldn't worry about it. All right, so we got that so far. I'm just trying to make sure I don't hit it hit my other side on the paper. I'm going to come over here and just go through them. Kind of cover it up a little bit. And just think, this is how you would do it if you were doing a floral arrangement. There we go. If you don't like a lot of leaves, you know, please feel free to not do these if you don't like them. I just, I like a lot of leaves and I like the mixture. I want to make sure I'm on here. Yeah, so please know that that's not, it's not necessary if you're not wanting to cover it with a bunch of leaves. It's just not. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing because I want both sides to kind of resemble each other in a sense. That one's not good. And you don't have to, I mean, you could go to a totally different color for your, for your leaves, meaning that, you know, you could use blue, you could use maybe even the, like the uh, yellow ochre. That's kind of pretty. Just did a, a different shade, different combination, so that it would be a little bit different and not look like all the same. Even though it's very similar. As far as what I do a lot of times, but that's okay. And I'm not worried too much about the direction my leaves go. If you, if you want to do light on top, dark on bottom, uh, that's fine. If you want to do it the opposite, that's fine too. You know, just paint to relax definitely paint to relax that's my my motto there you go now you can go up the go up the uh, stem of the or the neck of the bottle if you want I'm not going to do that right now so what I'm going to do next is tap in my centers and I once again, I'm going to go ahead and stop it, or stomp in all of these with my yellow first. And you can vary the size of your centers if you want. They don't all have to be the same. Obviously, some of your flowers are going to probably be different sizes based on what you're painting, 
how you're painting, you know, so adjust accordingly. They don't have to be huge. And then I'm going to go over here. Let's see how I want this. I want this to go up like that, I think. And when you're doing this, just kind of stand back, take a look, and say, hey, what am I missing? Is this good? Do I want to add anything? Next time I paint one, do I want to do it going a different direction? Do I need to dry this some? Which I think I might. Every time I do this color combination, it always reminds me of sherbet for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but it does. All right, so I got that tapped in. Next thing I'm going to do, do the heel, and I'm going to just kind of go down, and then I'm going to come through here and do this again. I'm just putting it up against this flower because it's like it's coming out from beside it. And then this one is going to be more of a top. I'll put this in some brown again. And again, with something like this, you can hit it again with the heat gun. And just keep working on it till you get the center to look like what you want it to look like. And I'm just putting the brown around the bottom. For some reason, I kind of like that. But if you want to do it differently, you kind of hit in the center there if you want. And I'm just kind of hitting it, get a little bit more of the darkness the bottom here and I can hit it in the center if I want. Then what I can do is take my little brush, tip it into the white and then kind of just go across to the top of it. I like to add white to these for some reason. Or you can do dots. If you like dots, I'm a big dot person too, but if you like dots you can do that as well. These up here I'm not going to do anything with. But anyhow, there you go. Simple, easy, great for beginners. If you like this, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. And before you leave, if you would share the video on your social network with all your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for taking your time to view my video. If you have any questions, comments, place them down below. Until the next time, please stay safe and healthy and have a good one.